I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, but you get filled with like an emotion temporarily. It lasts for about a good three or four seconds, but that three or four seconds end up being like 10 minutes. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh! Almost like when you catch consecutive numbers or you hear like a ringing in your ears. Give me ear emojis if you experience this. Um, what you want to do is not be curious in that space, though. What you want to do in that space is you want to focus on the feeling that you are obtaining and become overtly observant of your circumstances. I don't care if you're on a train and that ringing go off. Just be like, hold up. I mean, it's, it's almost like that. Not like a ju 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 but like a, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me? Not, not, not even the inquisitive nature of that, but this is how I'm feeling. And then through that, the clarity of what is being told unto you will become that much more tangible to you. I hope I'm not uh, speaking too obtusely or with too grand of addiction, so let me break it down to you. Bitch, when you motherfucking hear ringing in your ears, you see consecutive numbers, you know a sign is being delivered unto you. Take a moment of pause to reflect on the feeling and not the inquisitive nature of what the fuck it is. Okay. Okay. And some of you thought you were weird, but look how many people are experiencing what you're experiencing. If you have seen signs and symbols in your reality, if it's numbers, give me a whole bunch of numbers down there. If it's ringing in your ears, give me that down there. If it is, uh, you know, bugs, butterflies, dragonflies, anything like that, they're becoming more rampant out here. I want to tell you what to do with that. And this might hurt my business because y'all actually come to me to tell you what those things mean, but you can actually find out for yourself. But, you know, God, God, God got me. Okay, so hurt my business and I hurt my business. You finna get this knowledge today. <laughs> this is what makes me the best at what I do, the genuinity of my spirit, and I hope that authentically it is received unto you. And if it's not, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out, get the fuck out, get the fuck out. Okay? Shit. Uh, go within. You go within during those moments and focus on the feeling. I was doing this yesterday, and um, I actually struck up a dialogue with the energy that comes to me. Normally, we think in our own voice. Psychics and mediums hear the voices of others. Uh, this voice was a voice I never heard before. It was a dark, deep male's voice, but it came in the vision in my mind was of light. I was engulfed in light, and then it was like, boom. And I was like, okay, well, I always petition them as God, right? So this is the version of God coming to me. Um, and what, what are you trying to tell me? We had a brief dialogue, and the part that is I'm able to iterate in the English language, of course, there was communication that was nonverbal, and I definitely digested that. But the part that I picked up on and remember, I actually dropped it on my Instagram story as well as my Facebook status. I said, me, what am I supposed to do now? Okay, in the context of that question, me petitioning this entity that came to me after that feeling of, oh, my God, you know, sinking in, I'm focusing on the feeling I'm in active communication. Go with me here. Okay, um, I said, what am I supposed to do now? Like, you know, because I've reached this level and I'm like, OK, my dreams that I once dreamed, I'm already accomplishing. Um, I, I I work harder than anybody that I know. You know what I'm saying? And if you are an entrepreneur and you're not putting in more hours than somebody who works a nine to five, then it's a motherfucking problem. Now it's, a okay? problem. it's a problem. It's a problem. You need to put work in what it is you're trying to do. And if you're trying to figure out what it is you're trying to do, come see somebody like me. Now, with that being said, so I was like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, what is my life's purpose? What is my calling? What am I, what direction am I supposed to angle myself at this time? Right? Um, and he said, show them how grateful you are by how hard you go. <laughs> At that point in time, I gave the salute and I dismissed the spirit. Okay, when I finally got the two hours of sleep that I got last night, he revisited me. And I really do feel like it is the entity Enochin, um, who is a spinoff of the Enoch story, which is a race of aliens that descended upon man um, before Christ um, and endowed us with the knowledge to uh, sophisticatedly evolve our technology. Uh, the Enochin race has been said to have visited in the 1900s. This is why the technological boom took place, where we were on horse and buggy in the next 
600 years we're driving automobiles. This technology was bestowed upon us by beings that aren't from this realm. It is a conspiracy, and you know, I've been introduced to a lot of conspiracies for season seven, so I hope it's not blowing your mind here with the philosophy that I have. But I feel like it is an Enochian version of spirit, the spirit of the great knowledge that is bestowed unto me. And then I was like, well, show them how grateful I am. Grateful to who? And he said to exist consciously. <laughs> then I got woke up and had to read goddamn Normani friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting with that to be knowledgeable that you are alive is a huge blessing that we all take for granted the reason I say that is because there are living beings here that aren't conscious they're alive the animal spirit or the spirit of Gaia is a living spirit right but animals typically operate on instinct I have perceived a human spirit in my canine though um, which leads me to believe that Dogs are the physical manifestation of beings that are tortured on the other side. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. But since we're talking about it now, my cat is also a living portal. Um, the physical manifestation of the transition from the physical to other realms. Okay. 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 I can tell you in my adult life, I, I live alone and I live with my cat and my dog. They are not conscious that they are living beings, okay? They're operating. They, they could. Be, there's something behind their physical being that is perceiving the life that they live. But they operate on instinct. Birds operate on instinct. When I look at my birds descend upon the lake and they're flying in this uh, flying V, and I'm not talking about the Mighty Ducks bitch, but I might watch that movie. <laughs> that was a good movie. <laughs> That is the, the orchestration of instinct governed by one spirit. We have individual consciousness. And for that alone, even if you're at the bottom of the barrel, gratitude should manifest. If it does, manifestation will not be like pulling teeth. It'll be effortless. And this is why my transitions upward have seemed to be seamless to the general public. <laughs> Um, 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 everything catapulted during this moment that I referenced in season one. I was in L.A. I was dead broke. I was living out of my car. Um, I Well, I had an, a, a place, but it was the size of one of my closets right now. Um, I, I, I lived there, and it was only $1,000 a month, and that is very much so unheard of. I cooked on a hot plate, and I got uh, gas station hot dogs every day for dinner, and I love Tuesday's Popeye's uh, 4 for 4. That's when they had the leg, the wing, the breast, and the thigh for $4. I used to buy $20 worth and eat on that all week. I was dead broke in LA chasing the dream and I couldn't afford it anymore. My mother refused to help me. Every time she refuses to help me, I level up. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, give a round of applause for Mother Boots. No shade. Every time she says no, I find a way. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, 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 uh, she cut me off, and, uh, one time my cousin paid my bills, and I ended up doubling that two years later, but that's neither here nor there. I raised my hands to God, and I fell on that floor of that motherfucking closet-ass apartment. I was like, I am doing the best I can. What am I supposed to do? Like... I yelled at God. I cussed him out. I said, what the fuck? I done brought this fucking car. I'm living out of a fucking shack, bitch. I don't have shit to my name. These jobs ain't hiring me. I know I'm talented, but LA don't see it. What the fuck is going down? God damn it. And he, and, and, and he said, surrender and be grateful. Well, I drove my ass back to Charlotte, North Carolina, pitched shop in a garage seven years later. I live at the big house on the lake. <laughs> okay. not easy, but my work ethic and my gratitude to exist outweighed it, and I, I operated like that on a subconscious level. Um, to anybody who I've taught magic to, 
prior to the thoughts video that is on my website as of right now, um, in the classes department, if you want to get into my philosophy or whatever, there's something that needs to happen before you even open up, open up a damn uh, a magical spell kit, before you even pop open a cauldron, before you even begin petitioning. Gratitude. Gratitude for simply drawing breath on this plane. Orchestrated by gods, we live in an environment where our environment sustains our livelihood. We literally breathe the fucking environment. You can't tell me God don't exist. <laughs> you can't tell me God don't exist. You can't tell me. And for that, God be grateful. If you are grateful to just exist, I promise you your existence can be better. I'll leave you with this, and this is the word uh, that, that that I guess was laid upon me to give to you. Because every time I get a download, I upload it to you. And hopefully you acclimate it to your realities. All season seven, I'm preaching, bitch. So if you don't like a sermon coming from a nigga bitch up in Geesh, and you sit up there like... I hate to say it. I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. Then you're not with us. You're not a part of my community. When I say my community, I'm talking about the people that have come to me based upon me being me, based upon what I service for them, but also based upon their desire to learn and evolve. And season seven, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. How you doing? So, okay. So, okay. Okay. And if you're not with evolving, then stay where you at. You can't speak butterfly language to a motherfucking eternal caterpillar. Bitch. <laughs> I want you to write this in all capital letters in the comment section. Gratitude defines your aptitude. If you are in perpetual complaint, you got to quote this part. Gratitude defines your aptitude. That's what you need to quote. <laughs> 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 but if you are in perpetual complaint, if you are consciously looking at the glass half full and half empty, You'll never, you'll never get out of where you are. I promise you, you'll, you'll, you'll be perpetually where you are, which is why a lot of the time the Nevergad card in my tarot deck, which represents consistency, has been coming up. You are a product of your environment when you can actually change the environment itself if you were just to be grateful for the environment that exists and that you can perceive consciously as a human being. As spiritual people, we forget we're human. We're so focused on what we can't see. So let me bring it down to you real quick. And work with the physical realm. Okay? Gratitude defines your aptitude. And I'll be right back to get the straggling holes together with these readings. This is my song, Hum Hum. I hope you like it. And I'll be right back. <laughs>